Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so impressed with you all as we move an hour ahead. There's so many of you that are tuning in as well, those of you ha who have uh, shown up in person. We are now progressing through Lent, and we are in our second week of Lent. And just as a reminder, it's the 40 days of progression toward Jesus' death. And so we have been leaning into that. That is the theme for this sermon series, to lean in. A lot of you come here, but some of you have been over to our other building. And between this building and the building next door is a fire door. Now, this door is pretty heavy. You can't just push it and it opens, but you often have to lean in to get that door open. I remember when my son was a certain age, he couldn't get it open. But as he got older and his strength got stronger, if you lean in, you can actually push that door open. And so it is with life and the spaces that we're in now, Lent, um, war, and all the things that promise or seem like they could come undone, the threat to democracy. It is a time where we are called to lean into our faith, to lean into our faith and where we are on this journey. So I invite you on the second week to go with me and I hope that you are blessed in the process. In the second week, the theme is finish the work. Last week we talked about taking the test and not being afraid to take the test and that test come. This week we're talking about finishing the work. That probably doesn't sound all that exciting for some of us who seem like we have an insurmountable amount of work. How many of you do taxes? How many of you in the room complete taxes? And for those of you that didn't raise your hand, how many of you in your lifetime, or you're listening to me, how many of you have had to do taxes? Well, one thing about taxes is there's a deadline, right? And that deadline comes about the same time every year. There are some outstanding folks, in fact, I'm impressed, that complete their taxes in January. And then there are others that completed in February or March. You guys know the deadline is in April, usually 15th to 18th. The majority of people every year, even though they know when it's going to happen, complete their taxes when? In April. Usually you can see pictures and you can see media that covers the day that taxes are due and there's long lines of people slated to turn in their taxes. But all of us, all of us, most of us that need to do or complete our taxes, we're guided by this date. This date gives us an impetus to finish the work. Without a date, I dare say that some of us might keep putting it off. But with the date, we are given motivation to get our taxes in. We want to comply. We want to be good citizens. Every year in our church, we have an annual meeting. We try to tell people what's been happening in the church. But there are a lot of things that go into having that meeting, such as a booklet. We give you guys a thick booklet, and in that booklet are different leaders who are asked every year to submit a report. And the deadline date, leaders, this year was? Now say it with more confidence. Ja January 6th, oh, I thought it was the 7th, but you know, it's somewhere in there, January 6th, 7th. For all of my leaders, they had a date that was due. This date serves as sort of, hopefully, a motivation, but this work is a little bit harder. Some work is harder than others. It's easy to do some work, and some work is a little bit harder because you're trying to properly account for the whole year. You're trying to talk about new direction and feeling the discernment of the Holy Spirit. Once again, some get it in early. I think our earliest is Ina Grace. You get the award for the earliest every year. And many get it in closer to the deadline. Similar pattern. And some, some, a couple, are a little late. This is not meant to make anybody feel superior or make anybody feel bad. Just another fine example of work and how each of us approaches the task of work that lays before us. In the biblical text today, Jesus too has work to do. His work does not have a date, but it has an urgency, a sense of, hey, I don't have long to get this job done, a sense of purpose. Jesus gets a warning from all of the people it could have been. He gets this warning from the Pharisees, and the Pharisees say to him, Herod wants to kill you, not just a neighbor, not just, you know, the next door neighbor that maybe gets on your nerve that you got off to a bad start, start with, but a royal official who wants him dead. 
Herod is also the one that gets the credit for arresting John and killing John. He gets warned that this time on earth may not be long for you. He gets a death threat and Jesus responds. Jesus responds, his immediate response is, I have work to do. I have work to finish. I have an assignment that I have been given. I have purpose and I have passion. I am here for a reason and that reason is not done. Leave me alone. It's, it's not time for me yet. So, you know, I was watching this movie, Inventing Anna. Actually, I've been kind of intrigued with this movie. I may have mentioned it in another sermon, which is based on a true story. I've done a fair amount of fact checking because when they say it's inspired by a true story, you know some of it's true and some of it's kind of sensationalized. But I've been doing some fact checking. This lady from Germany swoops down on New York and swindles friends, banks, and major institutions out of a lot of money. The journalist who broke the story wrote these words. This was Manhattan in the 21st century and money is more powerful than ever. Rare is the city dweller when presented with an opportunity for a sudden and unexpected influx of cash doesn't grasp for it. Of course, this money almost always comes with strings attached. Still, everyone makes the reach because here, money is the one thing no one can ever have enough of. Resilience is hard to come, but not capital. Maybe it could have happened in this city. Enormous amounts of invisible money changes hands every day. Why not? Why this girl? Yet she managed to convince an enormous amount of cool, successful people. Anna looked at the soul of New York and recognized if you distract people with shiny people, if you show them the money, they will be virtually unable to see anything else. And the thing was, it was so easy. This lady worked her job. She knew how to read people. She knew how to get over on people. She knew how to swindle people out of their money and it has disturbed me because lots of folks are working, but today, what are we working for? And is it noble? And does it reflect our values? Far too many of us are voluntary and maybe not so voluntary supporting capitalism. It's in our veins, it's in our blood. Anna Sorokin represents capitalism, but she represents the worst of who we are as human beings. There's all kinds of work that we can do every day. We can really be busy doing work. But Jesus wasn't just doing any kind of work, and he definitely wasn't trying to swindle people out of their money. He was helping people to be whole again and well again. He was meeting folks where they were on the side of the road at wells in some tough situations. He was trying to get them to where they needed to be. And he was working with a deadline, more or less. Not today, Satan. Not today, haters. Not today, naysayers. Not today, swindlers. Not today, capitalists. Not today, bullies. Not today, mean people. Not today, scammers of the world. Not today. I have work to finish. Just step off. I can think of one set of people who should command a deep respect from all of us because each day these people try to instill knowledge in little and not so little people. I call them teachers. Many of us owe a lot to teachers. Often when I ask people and I ask some of you about a teacher that made a difference in your life, right away you can remember that teacher or those teachers. I remember Ms. McCallum instantly because she saw something in me that I did not see in myself. Teachers deal with all sorts of problems, and if they're working in a more impoverished area, they have obstacles, real obstacles facing them. I was talking to a colleague the other day, and one of the things she said is when I became the principal, I had to develop resources. I had to go out and get things that I needed for my students, meaning they weren't provided already to her. 
So on top of teaching, on top of preparations needed to teach a class, on top of dealing with what kids bring from home to school, and on top of all the bureaucracy that teachers have to deal with, on top of that, they then have to go out and find resources in certain communities to get the things they need to teach their kids. And sometimes they buy it out of their own salary. So when CPS teachers made it a part of their contract to have students wear masks, I say we should have honored that contract because of what they do, because they put themselves on the battlefield every day. They do important work. There's all kinds of work that we can do, but there's some work that's valuable. It's important. It's necessary. Jesus leaned in to his work. He knew what people needed, and people need the Lord. Stay with me. People need to know their worth as a creation. They don't need to be continually torn down. People need to be built up and given second chances. People need grace. People need to be redirected and replanted and rerouted so that they can travel the path that God has for them. People need deep healing these days. People need to be restored after they make the mistake. They need to be lifted up and restored. People need grace and mercy. People need others to believe in them as God believes in us. Being a Christian is easy, but being a follower of Christ is hard work making sure our walk and our talk are consistent. That is hard work. Subscribing to values that are non-capitalistic, that's hard work. Swimming upstream against the current in our society, that's hard work. Finish the work. My mentor once said that we need small projects because the longer projects sometimes can be draining. Fighting injustice can sometimes be so draining. Taking on capitalism can sometimes be so draining. And so it's important for us to have small projects that you can finish and feel some sense of pride. Thank you, Jesus. He had a garage, my mentor, and he would fix little things around the house. And those small projects made him feel good. Well, United, we've been doing some small projects here. We are officially an ONA church, and we are still waiting to celebrate that small project. We have Youth Connect this year. Two weeks ago, we had 11 kids, a small project. We are doing a pilot prayer group on Thursdays, a small project, but people turned out and they wanted to connect. Small project. We will be on our lawn March 26th to clean the lawn, providing some care. Small project. Spring is coming and it's a sign that there's new growth and new beginnings. Small projects. United, there is so much we can do. Maybe not the big, big thing. Maybe that will take days and months and years, but we can all do small projects. I know that so many of you are already engaged, but there's a few of you that are on the sidelines, and you can do small projects. We invite you to do small projects. We can do a little bit of work that goes a long way. Let us be a part of what Jesus has started. What work awaits you? Many during COVID said they finished projects, but many didn't. What work awaits you? What has been on your mind to do for years, but sits in the to-do tray? What work do you need to finish? What would you like to be read in your obituary about you? What do you need to do for it to be true? When people are doing the work, that they are passionate about, they can do it for days. You know, I notice when I watch a kid and they're doing something they want to do, you have to stop them. But the moment they're doing something that they don't want to do, you have to watch them. <laughs> and so it's true with adults, too. Kids are often just a replication of us older people. And so it's necessary and important that we connect the work that we do to our mission to our life, to our purpose. Everything that Jesus did, he connected it to his mission and he connected it to his purpose. 
It is still hard for me, and I don't know about you, to watch Russia invade Ukraine. Ukraine chose to stand up to Russia. This was not an easy choice. Their leader chose to stay and fight in Ukraine instead of being lifted out. They knew they had to know that many of them would die. War always brings death. But one of my friends reassures me that they are fighting for something bigger. They are fighting for democracy. It appears all over the world that when people have a choice to select what kind of government they want to live under, most people want to live under democracy where they don't have to fear being themselves, where they can be fully human, where they can critique and not get killed. And so sometimes we will fight wars we may not win because more is at stake than us. Sometimes our work, sometimes the real work calls us to follow the radical witness of Jesus. Sometimes it even means dying, which is what Lent is all about. And that's a hard pill to swallow. Jesus had to finish his work here, and finishing his work led to death. Standing up for one, one believes and walking in that truth every day is a full-time job. This year at Christmas, we raised $700, $800 to give to Inglewood Barbie, who serves a meal every night in Chinatown at 1030 to folks living on the street. Sometimes there are a lot of folks, and sometimes there are only a handful of folks that come. In snow, sleet, rain, whatever. If it's zero degrees outside, she's still there at 1030. She lost her mom to the streets. This is her work. She's connected to the work. She just doesn't do the work, disconnected. But she's connected to this work. She's out there because it connects her to her mom. She is out there to help others because she was unable to help her mom. And we supported her with a nice financial contribution. I felt proud last month in February to go out on a Sunday night, because there was no school on Monday, and deliver her a check from United Church of Hyde Park. She's going to be out there until mid-April. And each year, she commits to finish this work no matter how cold it gets. I'm like, if she was serving a meal in the summer, that would be one thing. But I've seen her serve meals where there was snow on the ground. Inglewood Barbie is doing the work. So I started today talking about inviting Anna. And there was this journalist, Jessica Pressler, who wrote Anna Sorkin's story. She wrote this story when she was pregnant. When she started the assignment, she was already very much pregnant. She wanted to finish this article before she had her baby. I did fact check that one. She was a journalist that had wrote a story in the past, and it had turned out to be false, and it threatened her credibility as a writer. Jessica had something to prove. She wanted her daughter to come into this world and be able to look at her mom as a valuable, credible writer. But really, she had something more to prove to herself. And so it was important for Jessica to finish this article before her delivery. The, move made it more, the movie made it actually more dramatic. But she does finish this article two weeks before she gives birth to her baby girl. Finishing the work is important. Whatever that work is that God has given to us, it's important for us to take it seriously and to finish it. Jesus was working steadfastly when he got the warning from Herod, when he got the warning from the Pharisees that Herod wanted him dead. What would you do if you knew somebody really wanted you dead and they had the power to do it? I hear Putin is down in a bunker. That's a low blow. <laughs> Jesus always knew what he had to do. He was about vibing with people. And so even with the threat of death on his head, he never stopped doing what he needed to do. He had no shortage of people that need healing and love, signs and salvations, light and love. Sometimes it can feel like the world needs more from us than we can give. Sometimes it seems like there's so much need in the world. Quite frankly, Jesus was exhausted himself because there was so much need, even in his time. And there's still need for healing and hope, signs and salvation, light and love. When some Pharisees came to him, Jesus' response was, listen, 
I'm casting out demons. I'm performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. I finish my work. United, let us lean in right now. Let us lean in, and we do have a work to do. <laughs> Amen? Let us lean in to what God has for us. Let us renew and replenish and lean into finishing the job. Let us say with clarity like Jesus, I have a work to complete. God is not done with us yet. Amen.